good evening, everybody, and welcome inside the State Farm Center in Champaign for Fighting Illini basketball. The opponent tonight, the NC State Wolfpack from Raleigh, North Carolina. Four, five, six, seven. Here is Hill. Hill zigzag down the lane. Layup. Got it. Crowd on its feet at State Farm Center. It was a night that Max Abramovitz would be proud of. It is why he designed this space. Max Abramovitz designed buildings around the world and left his mark on his alma mater. He created two of Illinois' most iconic buildings, the Assembly Hall and Cranert Center for the Performing Arts. An architect's job is a very interesting job in the fact we are not doing architecture unless we solve specific functions. When they come together, then we have what I call architecture with say a capital A. When you walk in a door and you can see 16,000 people, that's the art of architecture. Not every building is going to allow you to create a work of art, but if you don't start out thinking that way, you'll never create a work of art. Max Abramovitz was born in 1908 on the south side of Chicago. His parents were Jewish immigrants and his mother spoke only Yiddish. She communicated to her children through song out of concern they would inherit a heavy accent. He certainly didn't grow up an aristocrat. He came from very humble beginnings. The first inclination of his interest in design was, he said his father let him design the windows in the little grocery store that they had. He went to work in a bank and he was polishing the brass numbers and I don't know why, but an older woman in the bank said, your life is wasted here. And she gave him the money to start at the University of Illinois. So he went down there and started in the architecture program. The University of Illinois is actually the second school of architecture in the country. We have a trajectory of one that combines creativity with innovation. Max excelled in his classes, but he struggled to pay tuition. The university was able to find him work as a dishwasher so that he could finish his studies and graduate. He learned what he could in the Midwest, you know, with great aspirations. One certainly wants to test the waters. He was fortunate to be able to travel to France after his studies in the United States with the Beaux Arts. He also received the Rome Prize. So he was able to really take advantage of these trips to explore the world and he became more aware of how people use space. And this is something that's way ahead of its time because right now this is a very urgent matter that we were considering 50 years later. He had some very uh, intense encounters with Nazi Germany. He, he found himself in the middle of rallies that just sprouted up in public spaces. During one of these rallies, Max and a friend were stopped and questioned by a soldier, wanting to know why they weren't giving the Nazi salute. Wearing berets, they were thought to be French and were able to escape without any altercation. But the experience stayed with Max. He volunteered to enter World War II. He wouldn't have had to go because he had two children and he was over the age. But being Jewish, he felt he wanted to go and he was sent to join the Flying Tigers in China. Taking off from airfields literally paved by hand, American Flying Tigers. He designed bridges and airfields and housing for the soldiers. All of those very diverse places and issues and experiences kind of came together and, and helped him make some of the decisions and influenced his art and architecture. You learn, you, you, you just learn. You can't, you can't learn without knowing, without seeing. Returning to the States, Max settled in New York and quickly made partner with a stylish up-and-coming architect named Wallace Harrison. Harrison and Abramovitz became one of the most successful and innovative architecture firms of the post-war era. They complemented each other because they were so very different. They were worked together as a team that did just an unbelievable volume of work. Their work included the United Nations Building and the Philharmonic Hall at Lincoln Center, one of the crowning jewels of the New York art scene. 
When it opened up, Jacqueline Kennedy was there and it was the fanfare of the architectural scene. Many saw this as the new architecture that was able to embody some of the principles of order of the past, but also bring something dynamic to the urban scene of New York at the time. It was that same ingenuity he would bring with him to Cranert Center for the Performing Arts at Illinois. Cranert needed to be a space that brought together music, dance, and theater. Max's brilliant design allowed for five separate performance spaces in one combined cohesive space something unheard of at the time. The five theaters are meant to be used in different ways. There's one for plays and one for opera and one for concert and the outdoor uh, amphitheater and, and the black box. It's a little more intimate, but also it has a very vast array of demands placed on it. It's an incredible asset to have a world-class performing arts center in a small, city in the middle of central Illinois. It's a great thing for the university and a great thing for the community and of course I get an added dividend of having the fun and pleasure of trying to see what I can produce. His projects were relatively cutting edge and so the first reactions tend to be kind of negative and five, ten years later they're ahead of their time, innovative, we love them, we can't do without them and certainly Assembly Hall is like that. Well, I loved it from the beginning. I think it's one of the great buildings of the world. My dormitory was Scott House, which was right on access through the uh, football field. And so I, I was able to look my freshman year and see nothing and then see it rise over the next three years. For the assembly hall, Max wanted the interior space to provide an unobstructed view for everyone inside. While strolling through a market in New York, he stumbled upon a wrinkled squash. The pattern of the squash inspired his design for an undulated roof. The form was not only beautiful, but strong. At 400 feet in diameter, it would be the world's largest unsupported dome. The engineers said it couldn't be built, and he said, of course it could. It's just two plates, sort of like scallops and you make them like this, and then you wrap a long wire around where they join, and one presses down, one presses up. And Max certainly was more than happy to push the limits of the technology, and in that sense, it's how your work stands the test of time, because it's new when you do it, and it's the example for decades. It was for the ice capades, it was for major concerts, it was for theater. What it allowed was for all these things to come to Champaign-Urbana. For over 50 years, Max's beloved assembly hall design has stood the test of time. Renovated in 2016, the newly named State Farm Center is still the place for sports and entertainment in central Illinois. If you went to school here, you've been in assembly hall or State Farm Center, you know that's part of being a university student. I don't think you can separate the building from the university anymore. I think he would be very pleased that it's still here. Then I think, in the end, the architects did a very sensitive job. His story shows that you can start with nothing and end up with a great reputation just because of your talent. There should be a real sense of pride. He represents what was important and what is important about architecture and about architecture at the University of Illinois. Uh, of it being for people, of it being an art, of it being monumental at times, of serving culture and moving in the spirit. He had a wonderful enjoyment of life. He had everybody call him Max. Mm -hmm.